Prophet ﷺ even told us about obesity that will become a phenomenon within his ummah. And many people in this room, I'm only kidding. Says, <laughs> <laughs> you see what I mean? The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Hello, darkness, my old friend. You naughty, naughty. No problem. You're you're coming with good interrogations. Al Ghazali wrote this in Nahiy al Muddin. As the has a long commentary. Can you tell me what the answer that he gave was? Is it possible to get to tell me what the answer that he gave? Yes, please. We we have to. Yeah, so, so, let me, so I, I believe that there is a problem with the logic here, and as I address the, the Professor Harris, what I would say is, there is an assumption that there is a distinction between ontological good and a real world evil. Is that correct? When you're talking about morality, when you're talking about Sharia law and all these kinds of things, you mentioned something quite interesting, you said, our ordinary requirements for moral philosophy. You mentioned two men, which are Immanuel Kant and John Rawls, both of which, in a sense, represent the white liberal tradition, both white men from, Western, uh, from the Western Hemisphere. My question is, why should it be that white men dictate to us what morality is? If you said our requirements for morality, as if we've all subscribed to it, why have you assumed that the white man is right? And if it, it, what proof do you have that it's objectively true to, uh, as an atheist? If we can get through this question, then we can talk about Sharia law and the false things that you were saying about it. As an atheist, you have the audacity to say our requirements of moral philosophy, as if the white man's moral philosophy is all of our moral philosophies. No, we have divine command theory, we have Quran, we have Sunnah, we have our own way of deriving morals. Okay. I'm very uncomfortable with how this has very quickly degenerated into a shouting match. For the last five minutes, Mark, who is a, an absolute gentleman, has been shouted at. Now, this, is not, this is not relevant, to be honest with you. Right. We're think... talking about God and morality. You've spoken about 10 minutes about white Islamic law. And again, and again. So, and again. Can, get, can you get to the point, please? And again, yeah. the point is I'm making a Get to the point. I'm I'm I don't need people telling me how to speak. I've not been told that I cannot speak in an assertive voice. A discussion doesn't exclude that. With all due respect, I don't want to be told off. That is a, a, a runaway tactic. He knows that he's got nothing to say about these things. Yeah. Prophet Muhammad and Salman Rushdie and homosexuality and attacking Islam. I'm telling you, respond to my arguments. Instead of trying to tell me off like a little boy, trust me, I'm not a little boy. In every single man, I'm a bigger man than a So let's suppose God doesn't exist. What can you atheists actually present and put on the table? You've got nothing. And the best, Mr. Faisal can actually put to the table is to say, naturalism can explain just as well, he says. He's not even trying to say it's better. He's trying for equality. <laughs> He's got a Nelson Mandela approach to the situation. <laughs> <laughs> he does. Assalamu alaikum, how are you guys doing? So Muhammad Ijab and Hamza sources had a debate against two atheists at the University of Johannesburg, South Africa. And Alhamdulillah, I managed to watch the entire debate. I think it was just about two hours after it was posted on or uploaded on Muhammad Ijab's YouTube channel where I got to watch it. So I think I was quite early. Um, and briefly, I think their performances were outstanding. It was superb, um, regardless of that little bit of drama that uh, occurred in it um, in the debate. But yes, nonetheless, I think the, the, the way in which they presented the arguments, the clarity, um, the, you know, the pushback that they gave, I think was uh, outstanding. I mean, I watched many debates, if not all the debates uh, from Muhammad Ijab and Hamza sources. And one can actually almost every time expect the opponents to have the, the, the same defeatist attitude and poor response. But what I'd like to highlight today is the actual style that Muhammad Ijab brings towards his uh, debates. I mean, I think uh, what I can see is that he's actually growing in the, the way he's debating. I think he's, well, he's always been confident, but like, I mean, there's just that, that, that extra that I can see, you know. I mean, comparing it to other Muslim debaters uh, and their respective styles, which I do enjoy as well, like uh, Daniel Hakikachu and Abdullah Al-Andalusi, who I particularly enjoy, um, I think Muhammad Ijab has a certain type of knack for adding that that extra assertiveness, and uh, of course his humor is one thing, and the man in which he um, his expressions uh, that 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 you know causes this um, you know his funny side to come out. Um, but he surely knows how to spark a bit of drama. I think yeah. if, for instance, you you know watch the uh, debates against David Wood, Cosmic Skeptic, and uh, Lars Gul or Gule, whatever the guy's name is. Um, you know, 
when Muhammad Ijab debated them, he added that flavor of, you know, I, that, 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 like he might throw a punch, quite literally, physically, he might throw a punch. And of course, we know that he wouldn't do that, uh, you know, literally, but uh, I think it just gives that extra, um, you know, push towards uh, putting the opponent on the, on, the, on the back foot and making your argument more assertive and more um, uh, profound, you know. Um, and the fact that he is so, you know, tall and big and like, I mean, his personality in of itself is also a big personality, I think puts more uh, strength in his arguments. I think also his facial and body expressions is used strategically to capture the audience, of course. I mean, especially after a response from, um, uh, well, let's say a, the atheist put forth a question and Muhammad Ijab has a certain attitude towards that question. Um, he, I think, ensures that he have these uh, expressions to, you know, get the audience on his um, on his wavelength, let's say, because I mean, uh, you know, what is the um, the response you get after asking a well a stupid question, for instance, right? So these are the types of um, expressions that I think he used quite well um, to engage the audience. And the manner in which uh, Muhammad Ijab is able to turn the tables on his opponents uh, concerning their beliefs and how they should actually defend it, you know, makes I think the, the the occasion more intensified. I mean, I for one feel you know very pumped up when I when I see that happen, and it's almost like uh, like I'm at a, at a football match, you know, watching two rivals going off at each other. But I mean, not that uh, these atheists are on the level of Muhammad Ijab. I think I mean, you know, the, the arguments that they put forth in of itself. Uh, is beyond um, these atheists who are obviously trying to, uh, you know, support their beliefs with very little foundation, I'd say. And I think Muhammad Ijab, like myself, is passionate about putting the opponent rather on the back foot um, in terms of, you know, them defending themselves on their beliefs, right, their false beliefs, um, while, you know, Islam don't really have to uh, be on the defensive. Because, I mean, it, it kind of reminds me of where truth will prevail over falsehood. And of course, these ideologies, atheism, liberalism, secularism, whatever the ism is, uh, are all false, right? And Islam being the truth. Um, and, you know, I think in the reality of things, in the greater scheme of things, on the grounds, let's say, um, you know, Muslims still have this inferiority complexes or, you like, you know, would tend to back out of certain arguments because they don't know how to uh, defend themselves against these um uh, quote unquote or so-called rational uh, ideas and, and, and arguments. But of course, using these tactics that uh, Muhammad Hijab and Hamza sources have used, um, and I mean, there's other debaters who also use similar tactics and who are also great at, um, you know, putting the opponents on the back foot. I think, uh, you know, the Muslim community should really um, look into it, try to engage uh, or at least learn about it um, and then engage in, you know, engage on the grounds with the with the non-Muslims who have perhaps uh, hostile uh, feelings towards Islam. And again, I think we, you know, thank Muhammad Ijab and Hamza sources for their efforts in this debate. Um, and of course, in the other works as well, um, and the previous works, really they are doing the Muslim community a huge, huge service. And, you know, so, so many of us are benefiting from, from their works. So may Allah grant them great rewards in this life and in the next, I mean, and on that note guys, Jazakallah Khair for tuning in. Please don't forget to like, share, subscribe and turn on the notification bell for more of my regular uploads. Jazakallah Khair. Assalamu Alaikum.